we've been looking at dealing with infinite scrolling. Um, so we looked, I, I spent some time yesterday with Ben uh, looking at different techniques to handle infinite scrolling. Uh, and one of the things that I ran into, which is actually interesting even outside of the whole idea of infinite scrolling, is only render what you're going to show the user. So we came across this JS fiddle that's done by I think Bijou. I don't know exactly how you're supposed to say his name, but he, it's this guy. Um, he is one of the core Facebook team members that is working on, the, on React. Um, so he's got his blog out here. I'll post his blog and his Twitter account. Um, I believe he's also speaking at React Rally uh, in August or later on this month. So the, the technique um, is actually pretty simple, but I thought it'd be worth going over. You can see right here where it says generate 250,000 records or generate 25,000 records. It will generate you know, a million records if you want. Um, and then as I scroll, it moves through there pretty smooth. You can see where it updates. There's just a brief moment where it flashes and then the records are blank and it, it reloads more of them. Um, and then as I scroll up, uh, it kind of does the same thing. But overall, it's a pretty good user experience. And I think that this is the technique that is used by the um, uh, the data grid. Let's see, what is it called? The table data grid component or something that Facebook created. Um, Find it. Fixed data table, that's what it's called. So I'll post this link as well. So this fixed data table um, is even more sophisticated and it, it's even smoother, but you can see how you know, here when you scroll through the records, there's no, truly no delay at all. There's a little bit of time for the images to load over here, but um, this has a lot of data in it and it scrolls and really, really smoothly. Um, and then in a lot of our projects, we're actually using Griddle. And I don't know if Griddle uses this technique or not, but um, anyway. Okay, so looking at the code, you notice that there's this grid body. Um, and then in here, there's grid. There are basically three components, grid, grid body, and I think grid header in here somewhere. Yeah, grid toolbar, that's the, the toolbar looking thing here at the top. All right, the grid, sorry. I'll find it here in one second. It's hard to read in this tiny window. Okay, so here's the grid component. Um, it sets up a default state. One thing um, that prevents us from using this code exactly as is is the fact that it sets the record height. So each record has to be a height of 25. In the code that we're working on, uh, the content is a variable height because it's the, the content from a section of a book. Um, so it doesn't really fit with the grid, but um, part of the technique here will, will work. All right, so then what it does, if I go down into the code here and render, here's the grid body. So grid body expects to be given records. That's the data that gets rendered over here. We need the total number of records, and then there's this visible start and visible end and display start and display end. So this is what the grid body is going to use to calculate which records the user can currently see. Um, and then there's that record height so that it can use that to calculate um, how many of those records can display at a given time. Uh, then the grid body is contained within this div right here that has overflow y as auto. If it overflows horizontally, it just hides the content. But if it overflows vertically, then we get the scroll that you can see right here. Um, and then every time you scroll, it, it's gonna call this on scroll method of the grid component, which is gonna update these values, the visible start, visible end, etc. cetera. Um, and then Updating those will update the state, which will trigger a re-render, and so grid body re will receive new properties, and it will re-render accordingly. So here's the on scroll, which simply figures out the scroll top of this DOM node, and then updates the scroll state, which is a method right above here, I believe right here, 
So it does some calculations to figure out where the visible start is based on the where the scroll top is and the record height. Um, it then uses the visible start to calculate how far down we can go. Um, then using that code, it can calculate a number that will be used to say, this is the record you should start at, this is the record that you should end at. And then of course it sets that state, which triggers the re-render. All right, so now is where the magic happens inside of this grid body. So we'll scroll up and take a look at grid body. Um, so grid body uh, has this will receive props method. Using the, the updated properties that are coming in, it can determine whether or not it needs to update depending on this, the visible start and the display start and so on and so forth. So basically it says if our set of data that is visible has changed, or that will be visible, is, is going to change rather, then we need to do an update. Otherwise, if we've already rendered the data, then we don't need to update. We can just set should update um, to false, which once you hit this method, then uh, React will call a should component update, and you can tell it don't update. So you can actually optimize the performance of your React components based on internal logic and tell your components, hey, don't, don't render. I know the state has changed, but nothing has changed that you need to worry about. And so just skip over the rendering. Um, you do want to be careful with this method because if you mess up that logic, then of course your component won't update and you might forget that you've overridden it and you'll get really mad. Is that part of the React slide? Like standard React component. It is. Yeah, that's just, it's another method in the life cycle that you can override and then React will call that. I think that in the React class, should component update just always returns true or something. I, I don't know exactly what their implementation looks like. But you notice that there's no need to call super here. You only call your, your own laundry. All right, so after determining whether or not it needs to update based on the records that are visible, then down here in the render method, um, we have this little bit of code right here, which says, don't start at zero, start at display start, and don't go to the end of the records, just go to display end. Um, over here, you can generate a million records, so you can imagine what this would do to your computer if you tried to do a for loop over a million records and render all of this for each of a million records. That would bury your computer and it would be a terrible user experience. But instead, you can just take a window of that data and say, start at this specific piece, end at this specific piece, render those, which is what's going on right here, right? We've got the JSX that's gonna render a table row. Um, and then when you're done, we'll just put those, let's see here. So there's, we've got the rows top, which is just gonna be the top row. It's probably this line right here with ID, first name, or something like that. And then we have the actual contents, and then we have some kind of a footer here that it's generating. Um, and then when it renders into the table, we're just gonna render those rows. That, so that way we're only rendering, you know, I don't know, what is that, maybe 20 records at a time or something? So 20 out of a million is not a big deal to render. Um, so if we set up our stores correctly, so that as you get new data, the store can put that data in an appropriate location, and then you let the view decide how much of that data needs to be displayed, then we can build really performant, efficient systems, um, which is where we're headed with the infinite scroll. Uh, we might <coughs> load you know, 10 different sections and display one or two of those at a time, and then as we scroll, you'll load more and more sections, keep those in the background in memory, but not render them, right? Only render the stuff that the user can see. So there's some calculations that are required to, to figure all that out, but um, nothing, it's all that more complex than what you see um, with the calculations they're doing in that scroll method down here in the grid component. Um, or you're doing this to calculate visible start, so on and so forth. All right.
So I just wanted to share that little piece of code that we found. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, it's worth taking a look at. And I think that this is sort of a simplified version of the fixed data table. And I'll post the links to all of these in the, in the notes. Those up to YouTube. Any questions?